So, good morning everyone. Today we are going to see thyroid gland. Thyroid gland uh, we will cover in uh, uh, this headings, uh, location, part, uh, capsule, uh, blood supply, uh, the relation, blood supply, nerve supply, lymphatics and the uh, uh, clinical aspect. So, before going on the proper anatomy of the thyroid gland, uh, first of all we have to know some things. Uh, that is like this uh, thyroid gland, the thyroid gland is the endocrine gland, right? So this is the only endocrine gland which is uh, located uh, in our body superficial first thing and this is the only endocrine gland which is depend on the external environment okay so these two things uh, are features of the features of the thyroid gland so the thyroid gland first of all the superficial in our body superficial superficially in our body and second thing it's depend on the external external environment or external for raw material raw material this thyroid gland thyroid gland uh, produce uh, sorry this thyroid gland uh, secret t3 and t4 hormone am i right calcitonin is also so T3 and the T4, a common name for T4 is the thyroxine. This is triiodo, triiodo thyroid, and this is the tetraiodo thyroid. So these are the hormones which are secreted by this thyroid gland. And one more that is the calcitonin, right? So these hormones are maintaining the BMR, basal metabolic rate. So um, uh, this. Uh, this is uh, uh, hormones and uh, superficially and the, um, uh, it's depend on the external uh, environment for the raw material okay for synthesis this uh, hormones we want iodine right iodine so iodine uh, uh, we are taking um, with a diet only so it's depend on the external environment now this thyroid gland uh, the shape of the thyroid gland it's x uh, it's axis like this is the thyroid this is the shape of the thyroid gland this is the shape of the thyroid gland so shape shape is the axis axis right now what about uh, dimensions dimensions is the 5 into 3 into 2 centimeter 5 is the length 5 is the length 3 is the width and 2 is the this is the width and 2 is the thickness okay so this is the uh, diameters of the uh, thyroid gland now location this thyroid gland this thyroid gland is somewhat here am i right this thyroid gland is somewhat here right so it's located just front of the trachea yes so it's the front of the trachea front of the trachea this is the location after that uh, now this thyroid gland has two lobes see here uh, this thyroid gland has two lobes well, first and second so two lobes this is the lobe and this is the lobe and this is called isthmus this is called isthmus so in the part uh, what we have to see we have to see this uh, uh, this um, uh, thyroid gland has two lobes and one is the Isthmus, right? So now we have to see one by one. We have to see the lobes and the isthmus. Okay, so one by one we will cover it, right? So see here. You just assume you just thyroid gland is somewhat here, right? So this is what this is the isthmus and this is the lobe of the thyroid gland. So you just assume this my hand. This is the this is the lobe of the thyroid gland, right? So it is like this only. It is in both sides like this only and, and between is the isthmus. Can I tell something is like this? Something is like this is the what? Thyroid gland. Like here. Right. So this is like this. So this is what anterior border. Am I can I tell this is the anterior border? Yes. This is the posterior border. Yes. Now tell me if it is like this. So this surface is called what? Medial surface. And this is what? This is lateral surface, right? And one more surface is given in our book that is the Posterolateral surface. So, lobe has two borders and three surfaces. So, 
am talking about lobe lobe right so this lobe has two border two border and three surfaces okay so two border which border anterior border and the posterior border right so two border and the three surfaces now this isthmus okay isthmus a part of the isthmus tell me this is the isthmus you just assume this is the isthmus here is one lobe and second lobe is here right so this is the isthmus so this is what isthmus is somewhat like this front of the trachea right and the connecting this two lobe with each other so this is the isthmus so this is what anteriorly right you for you this is the anterior no so this is the anterior surface and this is what posterior surface one border is here that is called what superior border and one border is here that is called what inferior border okay in some book it's like it's upper border and it's the lower border right only okay so this is the part of the thyroid gland now we have to see the relation okay so before going on the uh, relation uh, um, it's okay uh, uh, we will uh, go through the capsule okay and one thing one thing i uh, one thing i want to tell you that uh, vertebral level okay thyroid gland is located where uh, yes it is located front of the trachea only and this is the vertebral level c5 and the t1 okay um, c5 c6 c7 and the t1 okay so this is the what vertebral level okay oh, what this diagram see the, here is the hyoid bone and here what is this this is the thyroid cartilage okay in our basics already we there no one thinks that uh, like uh, uh, in anterior triangle of the neck okay i explained already this is the thyroid here is the hyoid uh, sorry uh, sorry this is the hyoid this is the thyroid cartilage and here is the cricoid cartilage and here is the somewhat is the sternum okay so we read already so this is what hyoid bone this is what thyroid cartilage and this is the cricoid cartilage and this is what this is the tracheal ring this is the tracheal ring now this is the two lobe you can see this is the lobe see lateral lobe lateral lo lobe of the thyroid gland and this is what this is the isthmus of the thyroid gland so we already see this is the isthmus right now this is what is um, in the uh, in the thyroid gland uh, there is one lobe uh, one small lobe is there that is called pyramidal lobe right see this pyramidal lobe is connected with the thyroid bone this pyramidal lobe see here one small lobe this lobe is connected with the thyroid bone with the help of levator glandular thyroid right this is one in the ligament so this pyramidal lobe is connected with thyroid bone okay in your mcq okay examiner can ask okay which one of the uh, following ligament uh, uh, following ligament or the structure connect this pyramidal lobe with the thyroid bone okay so this is the answer right so this is the normal position and this is two lobe and this is the isthmus that's all now we have to know we have to know about capsules okay so capsules of the this is the vertebral level c5 to t1 so capsule capsules of the thyroid gland it thyroid gland is covered by two capsules one is the false capsule and the second is the true capsule right so false capsule and the true capsule we have to see you just assume this I am drawing one diagram. This is the venous plexus. This is the venous plexus. This is the venous plexus. Now, here, somewhat here, we having two capsules that is somewhat here. This is the true capsules. Now, false capsule. So, false capsule is somewhat here i hope this master is visible so this is the what this is the false capsule now here is this is the red dot now this is what this is the false capsule false capsule and here this black color right this is the true capsule this is the true capsule and this is dot red dot 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 stick you know 
this is the plane of cleavage so this is the plane of plane of cleavage and this is what this is the venous plexus venous plexus right so what i'm trying to tell you this capsule thyroid capsule is um, two type of capsule one is the true capsule and second is the false capsule so false capsule you should you have to remember this that, that false capsule is the outer covering and the true capsule is present uh, inside the false capsule so the true capsule is the condensation of the condensation of the uh, fibrous stroma condensation of the fibrous stroma of the gland and this is the false capsule it it derives from splitting of the pretracheal fascia trachea is here and thyroid gland is somewhat here right so there is one pretracheal vertebra so this vertebra is splitting and the covering this thyroid gland now we have to we have to know some certain point that is the i am writing here about false capsule so false capsule some features of the false capsule as we know this false capsule is covering all the uh, all the gland right so this false capsule is the thin along the thin where along the posterior border this, this is the lobe so the posterior border of the lobe so here is the posterior border posterior border of lobe false capsule is the thin and the posterior border of the Low. Now it is thick. It is thick. Where in the median surface? Median surface. So this capsule here is the. It's very thin here in the posterior border, and it's medially it's very thick. Okay, it's very thick, and it's formed one ligament that is called. Accessory ligament of Bell. Accessory accessory ligament of Berry. Accessory ligament of Berry, which connect this thyroid gland with the cricoid cartilage. Connects with the cricoid cartilage. Cricoid cartilage. So, if the examiner asking a question that which one of the following structures connect the thyroid gland with the can this cricoid cartilage? So, your answer is the uh, ligament of the berry. Okay. Suspensory ligament of the berry. Uh, Suspensory ligament of the belly, you can write sus uh, answer is the sus suspensory ligament of the belly, right? So this is the uh, this is the special features of the false capsule. Now you tell me one thing. Now think is uh, this false capsule and this true capsule, right? This venous plexus, venous plexus is the inside. This venous plexus is the present inside the true capsules, right? Inside the true capsules. Inside the true capsules. This is the true capsule and this is present inside the true capsules. So, during the thyroidectomy, okay, this is the plan of previous. If we remove thyroid gland from true capsules, okay, from the true capsules, you tell me, will we, uh, will we be bleeding or no? There, there will not be bleeding because this venous plexus is inside of the true capsules, so we can easily remove. But in the case of prostate gland, okay, this venous plexus is present between true capsules and the false capsules. So whenever you uh, you will do any surgical procedure in the prostate gland, then hemorrhage will be there. Okay, because this venous plexus will cut. But here, venous plexus is present inside the true capsule, so you can remove thyroid gland from the true capsules. There will no, there will not any bleeding. Okay, so hemorrhage will not occur, right? So this is the about capsules.
So uh, this false capsule, right? This false, uh, this uh, what is the important, uh, what is the special feature of the false capsule? It's very thin along the posterior border of the thyroid gland. So tell me, if there is any swelling, right? Swelling, so it will it will grow backward sides since this post this uh, posterior border of the thyroid uh, it has thin capsules. Okay, so this swellings any tumor if there is any tumor, okay, it will it will grow uh, or it will move backward sides. Okay, so normally uh, we can't uh, without any swellings. Yes, without any swellings in the thyroid gland okay there may be tumor there may be tumors so that tumor will go uh, back side so this is the capsules of the this is the capsule of the uh, thyroid gland since i told uh, this uh, thyroid gland is uh, connected with uh, this um, cricoid cartilage also body of the thyroid also so uh, in uh, generally uh, we can uh, differentiate this uh, thyroid swellings from the other swellings okay in the clinical so in the clinical it is a thyroid gland is the most commonly in cases are a thyroid gland so we have to identify whether it is thyroid gland swellings or other swellings okay so this is attached to the hyoid bone cricoid cartilage right so we have to tell the person swallowing like this swallowing okay so since it is attached to the uh, uh, hyoid bone and uh, uh, right so it will move up and down during swallowing okay if it is thyroid uh, swelling then it will move up and down uh, during swallowing if it is not then it will not move okay so this is uh, this is the capsules of the uh, thyroid gland now now we have to see the relation of the thyroid gland so this relation of the thyroid gland eh, this is the very easy relation is the very easy one diagram is here okay you should you should not worry about this diagram okay this diagram is the very very easy now this thyroid gland i am again drawing here uh, thyroid gland so so this is the your thyroid gland right so can i tell thyroid gland has one apex this is the apex and this is the what base so here thyroid gland thyroid gland and I'm talking about now lobe right so every lobe has what one apex second thing is base third thing is the border two border third thing is the so fourth thing is the surface you can tell three surfaces three, three surfaces so this is uh, we have to we have to see the relation one by one apex uh, relation of the apex based uh, border relations of the surface relation okay so first of all going with the apex relation of the apex right see here we have to go with our basic thing our basic thing is our basic thing is here is the thyroid cartilage this is the thyroid cartilage you see this is not exact position of the thyroid sorry this is not exact structure of the thyroid gland cartilage just for understanding you just assume this is the thyroid cartilage now here is the cricoid cartilage this is cricoid cartilage this is the thyroid cartilage this is the cricoid cartilage now here we have one sternum you just assume here is uh, somewhat here is the your sternum here is your stern. Am I right? So there is one bone between, uh, sorry, uh, muscles between this thyroid and this cricoid. That is called. This is here is the muscles, and that is called inferior constrictor. Inferior constrictor muscle. One muscles between thyroid and the sternum, as we know that muscles name is what is name between thyroid and the sternum, sternothyroid muscles. So one muscles is from here to this muscles. Sternum is here, but it's 
it's like it's going from here and attached to this end, but this is what between sternum and the thigh cartilage. So sternum thyroid muscles, right? So this is the sternum thyroid muscles. Now lobe of the this is what. This is the apex. This is the apex. And here, here is an artery. That is called that artery. Name of that artery is the superior thyroid artery. So name is the superior thyroidal superior thyroid artery. Superior thyroid artery is here. I showed here. Now there will be one, uh, here is one uh, now that now is called external laryngeal now this external laryngeal now so what is the relation of the this apex can i tell apex is a sandwich between see apex is a sandwich between between external thyroid muscles and the inferior constrictor yes it is a sandwich between these two muscles okay and uh, uh, other relation is the superior thyroid artery and the external laryngeal nerve. Now, this apex, this is the apex and thyroid gland is like this. So, can I tell apex, uh, uh, it is directed upwards. Yes, directed upward and somewhat is the lateral. So, this apex uh, directed upwards. Am I right? So, this is the upwards end. This is the upwards end. Laterally, am I right? Laterally, right? So, this is the uh, upwards and the laterally and this is the relation it is a sandwich between sternothyroid muscles and the inferior constrictor muscles. Am I right? So, uh, now this apex is uh, extended up to the oblique line. It is uh, extend, extend up to the oblique line of uh, thyroid cartilage. So this is the action of the oblique line of the thyroid cartilage and limited by limited by this is the external thyroid muscles. Okay, I am drawing one diagram here. Uh, this is the important uh, things uh, that you just assume this is your thyroid cartilage. Just assume this is your thyroid cartilage. Okay, somewhat here is your tracheal cartilage. Am I right? And somewhat here is the uh, your uh, tracheal ring. This is your tracheal ring. Okay. So, what happening actually, there is three muscles, one muscle is the this, second is this and third is the this, this all are three are the muscles. So, this sternothyroid muscles, so sternothyroid muscles, this is here, second number, second number, right, this is the sternum. Thyroid muscles. Now, this muscle is the called inferior constrictor muscles. You see, inferior constrictor. And this muscle is the above muscles. Is what is that? From thyroid to the thyroid. From thyroid to thyroid. So, thyroid muscles. So, this is the thyroid muscle. Am I right? So, one thing you should remember: this one, two, and three. This all three muscles are attached to the oblique line of the thyroid cartilage. Examiner can ask questions, okay. Which one of the following muscles is related to the oblique line of the thyroid cartilage? This three are, is the answer, okay. Thyroid muscles, external thyroid muscles and the inferior constrictor. This all three attached to the oblique line of the thyroid cartilage. Examiner can ask which one of the following is not attached to the th uh, oblique line of the thyroid cartilage. Okay, so these three are attached, okay. In MCQ, you should be very careful, right? So, uh, I told everything about apex. Apex is the uh, upwards and the uh, laterally up to the uh, oblique, um, oblique line of the thyroid cartilage. And your 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 apex is here. This is your apex. This is your apex. So, it is limited by the external thyroid muscles. Okay, uh, this uh, it's all about apex. Now we have to uh, know about something about base. So 
for this uh, i want to uh, rough this diagram so see in the base what happening here base of the thyroid gland here is the thyroid gland here is the thyroid gland am i right here is the thyroid gland. this is the base of the thyroid gland so from here what is one is the nerve that is called recurrent laryngeal nerve uh, relation of the base one is the recurrent laryngeal nerve and second is the uh, inferior thyroid when these are the relation of the base only okay and uh, border now we have to move on the border so this is the anterior border and this is the posterior border right this is the anterior border and the posterior border so anterior border separate the median surface from the lateral it's normal anterior border is separate median surface from the lateral surface and artery anterior branch of the thyroidal artery the relation is the anterior branch of the thyroid artery when i will discuss the uh, blood supply of the thyroid okay and there i will tell you and uh, one border is the posterior so posterior border is separating this medial surface from the medial surface from the posterolateral surface am i right yes so posterolateral surface and longitudinal anastomosis occurs in uh, occurs along with the posterior border okay in the blood supply of the thyroid i will explain everything now we have to move on the surface which is the very 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 important so first of all all uh, medial surface okay so tell me the relation of the medial surface can you tell me the relation of the medial surface here is the medial surface can you tell me the relation of the medial surface you know this thyroid gland just is situated front of the trachea front of the trachea see thyroid gland trachea and esophagus it's highly close uh, uh, structure so medially and we know the thyroid gland is just uh, present or just uh, situated on the thyroid uh, on the this uh, trachea only so two tubes listen two tubes one is the this is the thyroid gland so now trachea where is the trachea trachea is here only this is the trachea here this is your trachea only okay so medially this is the apex is okay but this surface is the medial am i right this is the medial surface and this is what this is the lateral surface so medially by two two tubes one is the esophagus esophagus and the second thing is the this is the trachea and behind this is the esophagus so esophagus and the trachea right this two and two muscles can can you tell me which muscles two there is two muscles one is the inferior constrictor one is the inferior constrictor second muscle muscles between thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage is called what tell me what this this is the crico thyroid right so this is also making the medial vibration so so one is the inferior constrictor and the second is the crico thyroid Crypto thyroid. This is two muscles, two tubes, two muscles, and two cartilages. Two cartilages, which cartilage? One is this thyroid cartilage, and second is the crypto cartilage. So thyroid cartilage and cricoid cartilage. So medial relation is very very easy. If you know, it's very easy. Two tubes, two muscles, and the two cartilages. I'm writing from here only, right? Now we have to move on the lateral surface. so in the lateral surface see, this is the lateral surface am i right this is the lateral surface so this is the lateral surface this is the lateral surface now please try to understand what i am uh, going to explain so again here is the this diagram is a sand diagram okay so i want to rough this diagram and then make it one different diagram see here this is the relation of the medial surface now you this is what this is thyroid this is this is thyroid this is the thyroid cartilage tc this is the cricoid cartilage cricoid cartilage right 
and here is the sternum. Am I right or not? This is the sternum. Now, muscles between sternum and the thyroid that is called sternothyroid muscles. This, this is called what? Sternothyroid. Sternothyroid. Muscles between sternum and the hyoid. That is called sternohyoid muscles. That is called sternohyoid muscles. I am showing you. This is. This muscles is called what? Sternohyoid. Sternohyoid muscles. And one muscles is between thyroid and hyoid. That is called thyrohyoid muscles. Thyrohyoid muscles, right? And one muscles superior value of the omohyoid. It's V red in the triangles. It's going and it's uh, attached to the hyoid bone. This is what omohyoid. This is the omohyoid, and that is the superior value. Now tell me where is the thyroid gland? Thyroid gland is somewhat here. This is the apex. This is thyroid gland like this. Am I right? So this is the only lateral surface. No, this is the lateral surface from here. So which which muscles? Which muscles? Tell me which muscles. Now relation of the lateral surface of the thyroid. Now I think you can write very easily the relation of the lateral surface. Lateral surface. One muscle is the sternohyoid. Second is the sterno. Uh, one is the sternohyoid muscles, and this is the sternothyroid muscles. And second is the uh, third. One, third one is the uh, omohyoid, superior value of omohyoid. Can I write strap muscles? Strap muscles, right? Strap muscles, and that is three. We know strap. What is the strap muscles? Strap muscles is the infrahyoid muscles of the infrahyoid muscles, right? And that is the fold number. But I write, I don't hear three. Why? Where is one muscle? That one muscle is between thyroid cartilage and the hyoid. That is called thyrohyoid muscles. But our thyroid gland is our thyroid gland is up to here only. No, that muscle is above this. So we are not going to write this. So three extra muscles. Which one? One is the sternohyoid muscles. So sternothyroid. Second is the sternohyoid, and third is the superior value of the omohyoid. See here. Right now, can you tell me one thing? Here? Sternocleidomastoid muscles. It arises from the sternum. Our sternum is the hair, right? And here is the mastoid process. Okay. So this is the what? This is the superior value of the omohyoid. Okay. I up to this is the superior value of omohyoid, and this is what? This is what? Sternocleidomastoid muscles. This is the sternocleido. Mastoid muscles. Am I right? Yes. So see, this is the anterior border. Anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid mastoid muscles is also making a relation in the lateral surface. So three strap muscles and the one is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Right. So this is the relation of the lateral surface. So medial surface has been over. Lateral surface we all uh, we have seen. So th this is the basic diagram. Okay, this basics I taught you in the anterior triangle of the neck. Okay, I am telling you again. If you are thorough with the sternal process and this basics, okay, you can write everything in the head and neck. Okay, it's very easy. So uh, it's all about relation of the lateral lobe. Now we have to move on the relation of the isthmus. Yes, relation of the isthmus is the important, right? And uh, Uh, what is uh, this diagram? Uh, uh, I will explain. Okay. So now relation of the isthmus. Isthmus. Relation of the isthmus. Relation of the isthmus. Uh, what is that relation? You first of all tell me the uh, about uh, something about the isthmus. This is the sternum. Two surfaces and the two border. Two surface and 
two borders right so which is the two surfaces anterior and the posterior anterior surface and the posterior surface so can can i talk about anterior surface anterior surface see now you you tell me this is the our hyoid uh, sorry this is our thyroid gland right so thyroid gland is like this this is the thyroid gland this is the only thyroid gland no so this is the stomach muscle this is the anterior border sorry this is the anterior surface so which two muscles sterno hyoid and the sterno sterno hyoid and the sterno thyroid both are the relation of the anterior surface of the sternum see here this one this term is here so anterior surface has been over what about posterior surface posterior surface is here this is the posterior surface and it's attached to the trachea so can i tell it's attached to the trachea and what tracheal ring so second third and fourth tracheal ring tracheal ring so this is the posterior surface over now superior surface now superior border sorry superior border so uh, superior border so i am writing here superior border right uh, this is the superior border of the uh, isthmus so superior border of the isthmus is providing a place for the anastomosis between anastomosis between two anterior branch of the superior thyroid artery superior thyroid artery okay i will explain in the this um, uh, um, blood supply okay blood supply of the thyroid gland and uh, what about this uh, posterior border so ima artery one artery is the ima artery is also related to this posterior border right so this all are the relation of the thyroid gland okay so relation has been over and uh, see now what is this diagram this is the horizontal section of the thyroid gland so this is the thyroid gland two lobe of the thyroid gland and this is what this is the isthmus just behind what this is the trachea and this is what esophagus am i right so medially trachea and the esophagus see here esophagus and the trachea right now come here this is what this is the sternocleidomastoid muscles and this is the sternocleidomastoid muscles am i right so laterally laterally by sternocleidomastoid muscles sternohyoid superior value of the omohyoid so this all are the what strap muscles Lateral muscles, am I right? And this is what lateral relation. So see here in the lateral surface, strap uh, muscles. Okay. If you don't know this diagram, you can you can draw this diagram in the exam. Okay. It is very good diagram than that. Okay. So uh, this over and now uh, a posterior. Uh, I forgot uh, one thing that is posterolateral surface. Okay. Sorry. The posterolateral surface. This is the thyroid gland. Now posterolateral is somewhat here. See, this is the posterolateral surface and the this. Carotid sheath is there. See, uh, this is your thyroid gland. See, this is your thyroid gland. Am I right? If if it is your thyroid gland, then this uh, carotid artery is going like this only. So posterolateral surface relation is the carotid artery. I mean carotid sheath and its content. Right. So this is over. So this diagram is over. And uh, what is this? Black black dot. What is this black dot? This is the recurrent laryngeal now. This is the recurrent laryngeal now. And this is the what? Parathyroid gland, right? So it's also uh, present in the posterior posterior surface. Okay. So this all are the relations of the uh, thyroid gland has been over, right? Now we have to move on the blood supply. Blood supply of the thyroid gland is very very important. This relation is very very important. So now blood supply. Can you tell me the blood supply of the thyroid gland? First. Blood supply of the thyroid gland. One thing you remember: superior thyroid artery. Second thing is the inferior thyroid artery and ima artery. These three are the arterial supply. Now you have to know the branches. Okay, superior thyroid artery is a branch of. It's from external carotid artery, right? So you here come here. We are starting from. Basics. This is what. This is the arch of it. Am I right? This is the arch of it. What is this? This is the brachiocephalic trunk. Arch of it gives three parts. One is the brachiocephalic trunk that is in the right side. Here, from here, two branches. From here, it's two branches. Right. So from here, one branch. From here, one artery will go like this. 
What is this? This is called common carotid artery. This is the common carotid artery. So right side, so right common carotid artery. Whereas the left common carotid artery, this is the left common carotid artery, left common carotid artery is the dark dot from the arch of aorta. This is the and this is the arch of aorta. And, okay, this is the arch of aorta. So now arch of this is the arch of aorta. Now this is the uh, left uh, common carotid artery, and this is what this is the subclavian artery. Sub clavian artery. Am I right? So left side. This is what this is the subclavian artery, right? Right subclavian artery. So from here one artery will be arising. That is the that is called external carotid artery. This is what external carotid artery. Can you tell me the branches of the external carotid artery? Can you tell me the branches of the external carotid artery? This external carotid artery has eight branches. Okay, among them one superior thyroid artery is the one branch. Am I right? So superior thyroid artery is the one branch. Now here is our uh, here somewhat here is the our what uh, somewhat here is our uh, this is the isthmus and uh, this is what thyroid gland. Okay, so one branch from here. So one branch from here. One branch. Uh, one minute. It's like this. Am I right or not? Yes. So from here it is the external carotid artery, and one branch will come from here. That is the superior thyroid artery, and it's divided into two parts. This is the anterior branch. From here it's also same things. It will come like here, and it's divided into two branches, and this is what this this will make the anastomosis. So this is the anterior division of the. Anterior division of the superior thyroid artery make the anastomosis on the superior border of the isthmus, and this is the posterior, and here is also posterior. Now you tell me, this is the subclavian artery, right? So thyrocervical trunk. Here is the thyrocervical trunk. Can you tell me the anastomosis around the scapula? Why? We are talking about thyroid gland. Anastomosis around the scapula. What do you mean by that? Why it's this? Thyrocervical trunk, right? Thyrocervical trunk also play important role in the anastomosis around the scapula, right? So, from here, one uh, this is thyrocervical trunk, and one artery will arise from here that is called inferior thyroid artery, right? Inferior thyroid artery is a branch of from thyrocervical trunk. From here is also, and it make anastomosis here. So, longitudinal branches. So I told you in the posterior border, okay, longitudinal branches make anastomosis, okay. So it's all about uh, artery. One is one more artery that is called ema artery. Thyro, yeah, ema artery. Uh, in thirty percent case, it's present and it's it's a direct branch from the subclavian artery, or sometimes it's the branch of the direct branch from the extra uh, arch of the aorta, okay. So it's all about um, it's all about this. Uh, it's all about uh, this uh, um, artery supply. Now, can you tell me the now can you tell me the venous drainage? Can you tell me the venous drainage? Tell me very fast the venous drainage. Venous drainage is somewhat here. See, this is the this is the thyroid artery. Am I right or not? This is the thyroid artery. So. One, one, sorry, this is what? This is the internal carotid artery. Sorry, internal, uh, one minute, internal jugular vein. This is the internal jugular vein. Internal jugular, internal jugular vein. So, here is, From this side, it's a left bronchocephalic trunk here, and from here, this is the right bronchocephalic trunk, right? So this is what this is the middle, mid, uh, this is middle. Sorry, this is the superior, superior thyroid vein. This is what? This is middle, yeah, middle thyroid vein. This is what? This is the coche vein. This is the what? Coche vein. Am I right? And one thing there is the from here inferior. This is what 
inferior thyroidal vein. This is the inferior thyroidal vein. So you should remember in the blood supply there is the superior thyroidal artery, inferior thyroidal artery, but there is not middle thyroid artery. But here middle thyroid vein is there, and this is the coccyx vein. Okay, so this is the uh, now so this, so this is the venous veins. Am I right? So now what we have to know? We have to know about now supply. So now supply and see, come here now supply. Now supply. So this now supply is to uh, divided into two parts. One is the parasympathetic, parasympathetic, and one is the sympathetic. Yes, okay. Sympathetic from the superior, middle, and inferior. Superior, middle, and inferior cervical sympathetic ganglia, and this parasympathetic from vagus, vagus, and vagus, and one more thing. That is what um, recurrent laryngeal now. Okay, so this is the now supply. Now we have to move on the lymphatics. So what? Can you tell me the lymph lymphatics? Okay, lymphatic drainage. It's from two types. Okay, uh, I forgot to tell you one thing. That is the uh, uh, that is the superior thyroidal sorry superior thyroid artery supply upper one third upper one third only. Okay, and upper part. Upper part of isthmus, but uh, inferior thyroidal artery will supply lower, lower two third. It's supplying lower two third. Okay, this is the you know, artery supply. So can you tell me the lymphatics? Lymphatics is the uh, two types. One is the uh, upper and the lower, right? So from lower part. Let's drain into C. Here is the pachea, right? So the lower part is drained into the pretracheal lymph node. Pretracheal lymph node. Pretracheal lymph node. And second thing is what? Pretracheal lymph node. And the second thing is the deep cervical lymph node. Deep cervical lymph node. And the upper laryngeal lymph node. Laryngeal lymph node and second is the upper deep. This is the lower deep. Upper deep of the uh, deep cervical uh, lymph nodes and the isthmus. Okay, sometimes this isthmus, uh, sorry, this isthmus, uh, lymphatic from the isthmus is drained into the posterior to the posterior to the sternum. That is the uh, post, uh, so. Uh, posterior, uh, this is the sternum, so posterior to the uh, sternum there is some lymph, uh, lymph node, it's drained to the there, okay, so this is all about the lymphatics. Now, now supply lymphatics has been over, so now we have to move on the clinical aspect, okay, so what is the clinical aspect? Whenever you thinking about the parotid gland, right, so, uh, uh, sorry, uh, this thyroid gland, okay, uh, whenever you are thinking about this uh, thyroid gland, uh, what you think? Tell me. First thing is come in our mind that is the goiter. What is the goiter? What is the goiter? Goiter is the enlargement of the thyroid gland. Any enlargement of the thyroid gland except during except that during menstruations and uh, during uh, pregnancy type or uh, lactation times. Okay, except that everything any enlargement of the thyroid gland is known as goiter. Why it occurs? It occurs in the two condition. Okay. It occurs in the two conditions in hypo and the hyper. Hypothyroidism and the hyperthyroidism. Right. In the hypothyroidism, what will happen? Tell me. The level of T3 and T4 it will decrease. Am I right? If it is decreased, okay, it will stimulate what? TSH level. So TSH level will be TSH level will Increase, am I right? So if it is increase, okay, it will go and act on the thyroid gland, okay. So thyroid stimulating hormone, so thyroid cells will stimulate and it will enlarge, right? So thyroid thyroid gland enlarge, okay. So this is the one hypo. In the hypo condition, what happening? The level of the T3 and T4, it's increase. 
okay and it's need to increase bmr so patient with tachycardia right so uh, these are the symptoms so this this is the goiter one goiter is called a simple goiter what is the simple goiter come here one thing is the simple goiter simple goiter is also known as puberty goiter puberty goiter puberty goiter so what is this simple goiter is the simple goiter occurs due to the deficiency of the iodine deficiency of the iodine okay it's very common in the uh, uh, women okay uh, 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 in women who are in the puberty stage okay so it's also called the puberty goiter okay when we will take the uh, iodine in sufficient amount this will disappear right so this is the simple goiter and this is the uh, uh, goiter now one thing is the massive enlargement of the thyroid gland okay in the case of goiter massive enlargement what is that massive enlargement massive enlargement of thyroid gland okay what will happen in this condition i told you i told you in the um, basics uh, in the relation okay that uh, in the capsule there is the posterior border okay it's very thin right one one thing is it's very thin in the posterior and second thing is uh, i hope uh, you can remember this is diagram this is the what uh, this is the um, thyroid and here is the cricoid and this is the before something i show you know this is the lobe and from here one muscles that is called what here is the sternum so this is muscle what sternum thyroid muscles due to this sternal thyroid muscles only here is the sternal thyroid muscles just above this thyroid gland okay so thyroid gland cannot thyroid gland cannot move upward sorry thyroid gland cannot enlarge upward because of this sternal thyroid muscles okay and the posterior border is capsule is very thin so it's so it's enlarging in the posterior side and downwards okay so in the case of the goiter commonly swellings in the low base or the uh, posterior border okay not in the apex side because of this external thyroid muscles okay so in the massive enlargement of the thyroid gland if it is massive enlargement you tell me what will happen already i told you the capsules of the uh, capsule at the posterior border is the very thin so this muscles will uh, move posteriorly it will it will enlarge posteriorly right so this is the gland and it uh, enlarge posteriorly means the medially right so what are the structure present in the medially so two tubes one is the esophagus and second is the trachea so it will it will give pressure on the esophagus and the trachea right then it will give pressure on the esophagus pressure on the esophagus and i pressure on the esophagus then what will happen patient cannot eat that condition is called the dysphagia this is a difficulty in the swallowing and if then this um, the thyroid gland okay massive enlargement and it's give pressure on the trachea trachea what will happen patient cannot breathe properly that condition is called what dyspnea am i right dyspnea and already i told you know recurrent laryngeal nerve is there okay if it, if it's give pressure on the recurrent laryngeal nerve recurrent laryngeal nerve then what will happen so there will be voice problem okay that condition is called dysphenia okay uh hoarseness of voice hoarseness of the voice okay so these all are the clinical aspect you have to remember in the massive enlargement of the growth so if you know the concept okay posterior border there is very thin okay they are above is there muscles that is called external thyroid muscles okay these are muscles so the thyroid gland cannot enlarge upwards okay but it it can enlarge posteriorly easily so yeah, so posteriorly so it will give pressure on this structure and this uh, symptoms will be come right and uh, um, the tumor of the um, thyroid gland is also common okay so this all are the um, so this all are the clinical aspect of the thyroid gland okay so i hope uh, you all enjoyed okay so thank you